Jenny and Wally are at work. Work-life balance immediately became uh, so much more positive for me. Like millions, Jenny isn't going back to the office full time. She'll continue working from home, even as COVID restrictions ease. It's not the same life at all. It's uh, for me, it's a much better balance. I'm a lot more relaxed. I'm a lot more relaxed in what I need to do during the day. I feel less pressure. There's a lot less distractions. Having stopped a daily two and a half hour commute through Melbourne suburbs, she's only expecting to visit the office once a year. And her boss is delighted. If a boss is saying, you've got to come back to work, I think the reasonable question is why? Why do I have to do that? How does the business benefit? How does the individual benefit? Almost none of Mark Fletcher's 75 employees are coming into the office. We work on the basis that people here are adults, they can make adult decisions, and that means they'll probably make right decisions. They'll make mistakes from time to time, but overall they'll make right decisions. Tonight, empty streets as Victorians stay in. It's eerie in the city. I've never seen it so quiet. The pandemic has changed lives because over one third of workers can do at least part of their job at home. We've fundamentally challenged the traditional way of working on where, how and when work is done and it has worked. There have been really positive outcomes for organisations and for people. Compared to 2019, office occupancy in the Melbourne CBD is at 15% and it's similar in Sydney at 18%. Even cities barely touched by restrictions are seeing far more empty desks now than before the pandemic. The combination of long commutes, cheap technology and newfound freedoms means two years into an experiment that was forced upon us, there's a new normal. I'm not going to tell my people what day they need to be back in the office or how many days they need to be back in the office. I think, you know, we're, we're really going to embrace this new way. Major employers are weighing up how much real estate they need, now that office workers might only come in two or three days a week. Gone are the days where you see the old brown carpet and brown walls and um, just a very stale type of office environment. That's not going to attract workers back to the office. Software company boss Luke Anir is inside his company's new building that embraces a hybrid model of work. Some um, prefer to work at home for periods and others love to be in the office. So we need to make sure that we're building workplaces that provide teams that flexibility so that they can do their best work each day. So the balance of power has really shifted from employers to employees and employees want flexibility. Before the pandemic, only two of Mark Fletcher's 75 employees worked from home. Now he's got employees in New Zealand and interstate. Staff are more productive and happier. Awful as COVID has been, I think it gives us an opportunity for a reset and a refresh towards this brighter future of a, a different working situation. The tools that office workers use, like email, video conferencing and shared documents, have been around for decades. Many of them are free. What the pandemic changed two years ago is it forced bosses to trust their staff to work even when they couldn't see them. I think giving the flexibility to your employees to work at home allows you to, um, to work the, the best way that, um, that suits you. More productive workers and happier puppies. <laughs>